Hello and welcome to the College Essay Guy College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event today. My name is Jennifer and I will be your facilitator. We have some fantastic schools here with us. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but they'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. As we get started, we have a few extra housekeeping announcements for you though. Your camera and microphone are off, so just know that your, the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen, though, to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can leave a question for all of our schools to answer for you, if you're maybe looking for a certain type of program, major, area of study, or you can leave a question for a specific school by including the name of the school with your question, so the representative will know you want to hear from them. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening. We hope you signed up for the rounds to come, but it's not too late. To join us, you can check the schedule on the website where you registered for this session to see what's to come and still register today. This presentation and all of the presentations are being recorded. They're going to be available at the same website where you registered in the coming days. And that website again is strivescan.com slash college essay guy. All right, I'm really happy to turn it over to our very first school today. We're going to be learning all about the University of Stirling. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, just bear with me as I share my screen. There we go. And now I'm going to try and fit it all in in six minutes. So um, I'm Ali Clark and I'm Head of Student Recruitment at the University of Stirling, which is in Scotland. Um, you're actually going to be spoken to by two Scottish universities um, today, but as I'm the first, I just want to give you a, a bit of an overview of the differences in studying in Scotland. It's a very familiar system to US students because it's a four year degree system, um, which allows for advanced entry depending on the grades that you manage to get. Work experience can be built in. You also have the opportunity to study abroad. So the majority of our students get the opportunity to study abroad for either a semester or a year. And that's at another country um, as well on the top of uh, Scotland. And then we ha also have the flexibility to transfer courses. So we've got an ultra flexible system in Scotland. You might be wondering where Stirling is. Well, it's very much in the heart of Scotland. So if you're wanting to go and hunt for the Loch Ness Monster, or you want to go to experience some of the larger cities in Scotland, we're about 40 minutes from Edinburgh, uh, which is the capital city, and about 25 minutes from Glasgow, which is the largest city and known for um, shopping. City of Stirling is um, one, a smaller city, um, but 20% of its population is made up of students. It was actually the ancient capital of Scotland long before Edinburgh was the capital of Scotland. And for those of you that have seen the film Braveheart, it is very much Braveheart country. Um, so although Mel Gibson, who's an Australian, um, pay, played our Scottish national hero, um, the real William Wallace came from around the Stirling area. So there's a lot of history there. Back to the university, um, we're about 10 minutes from the city centre. We're a purpose-built campus university medium size for Scotland with about 17,000 students, but very multicultural. So we've got over 120 na different na nationalities represented. Some of the accolades you can see there we're very proud of. We're Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. And two years ago, we were also voted UK Sports University of the Year. But don't worry, there's sport for all or sport for no one. And I'm not a big sport fan. So um, you don't have to like sport uh, to come to Stirling. Um, one of the things we're most proud of is our top 20 rating in the National Student Survey. So that's students voting on their overall experience, their learning, their teaching, and that's top 20 um, in the UK. This is our campus. Like I say, it's a purpose-built campus. It's probably the most Scottish campus because we've got our own loch, which is Scottish for, loch, uh, for lake in the middle of uh, the campus there. We've got our own castle, um, and we've actually got a nine-hole golf course um, as well as well as our student village, but I'll come on to that in a second. Like I mentioned earlier, Scotland's got a very um, flexible system. So you're usually asked to take up to three subjects in the first two years. Um, and at Stirling, it's ultra flexible. So you can actually take it across the different faculties there, of which we have five. So we specialise in, obviously, sports, as you might expect, uh, criminology. We've got um, marine biology, as well as our business school, um, too. In terms of sport, um, like I say, it's sport for all. 
Um, we have a range of sports scholarships and we have a number of elite athletes who have gone on and got medals at the Olympic Games and the Commonwealth Games um, as well. In terms of entry requirements at Stirling Wilkin, we're around a 3.0 GPA um, and we're test optional. So we've been test optional for the past two years and that looks set to continue um, as well. If you are submitting tests, um, then the scores are up there um, on the presentation. Um, please note that we will need at least one academic reference and we need you to write a personal statement, which is, I guess, a bit like an essay. It is slightly different from the Common App um, if you do decide to go through um, the UCAS system. And at Sterling, we, we accept all three. So we accept um, direct um, applications as well as the Common App. But if you're applying for multiple schools in the UK, we would always try and direct you towards UCAS because you can apply to up to five um, schools. In terms of scholarships, we've got an automatic undergraduate scholarship, which is a fee waiver. Um, and we also have um, a team that look after financial, um, financial loans um, and help you through the process of that, whether it be Sally May, um, etc. Tuition fees, this is to give you an idea. So we've got a range of tuition fees, depending if it's a lab based subject. So science based subject, it's going to be slightly more in terms of tuition fees. But Sterling has one of the least expensive living costs um, in the UK for students. So we would say on average, the living costs that you would need are between anywhere to between eight and ten thousand um, pounds a year. In terms of accommodation, um, please note there are no meal plans. So if you haven't um, mastered cooking, maybe want to get some recipes up your sleeve, but don't worry, Sterling's very much a community campus and we have about 10 different eateries. We've got a vegan shop, we've got our very own supermarket on site as well as a movie theatre. So there's absolutely everything that you could possibly need. You will not starve. Um, I'm hoping that I've stayed to the, within the six minutes. Jennifer hasn't popped up yet. If you have any questions after tonight, um, obviously you can um, put them into the um, chat box today, um, or please feel free to drop me an email um, at the University of Stirling. Thanks for listening. Yes, thank you so much, Ali, for starting us off and sharing about Sterling. You did a fantastic job. All right, I am excited to welcome our next school. We will be learning all about the University of Greenwich. Thank you very much, Jennifer. I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Okay, fantastic. I hope you can all see that. So yes. welcome to the University of Greenwich. My name is um, Alberto and I'm the International Recruitment Officer for North America at the University. So just a few things about the University. So why Greenwich? We were founded in 1890. So we've got over 130 years of teaching history and we've got courses across 400 subject um, areas from engineering to business to education and health to liberal arts and humanity programs. And we are ranked in the top 7% worldwide according to the World University Ranking 2020. We are based in London and in Kent. So two of our campuses are based in London and one is based in Medway, which is about 40 minutes into central London. We have a really, really strong and lovely self-contained campus community across all of our three campuses with a total of 18,000 students. And we have invested heavily um, across all of our facilities in the last five to seven years, over 80 million pounds. In fact, our fees are competitive for a university that's based in London and uh, many of our undergraduate and postgraduate courses actually also offer really strong placement um, and work opportunities as well. And we are one of the most international universities worldwide with students coming to study with us from uh, more than 130 countries. The first campus is where we teach uh, programs within the uh, Faculty of Liberal Arts and Sciences. This is in Southeast London, and um, it's about 20 minutes into central London. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's surrounded by history as well as many, many acres of lovely park. And as I said, 20 minutes from central, multi-million pounds investment here, particularly in the Stockwell Street Library and the Dreadnought Building. Um, and world-class world study facilities um, here and social spaces available, of course, as um, many uh, pubs and bars and restaurants in the local area as well. The uh, second campus is where we teach faculty, uh, well, programs within the uh, Faculty of Engineering and Science. Uh, this is a former Royal Navy base with a community of 10,000 students from all over the world. 
about 45 minutes by public transport, so by train into central London. Um, excellent study facilities, including the Drill Hall Library, which has uh, more than 150,000 books and 400 computers, as well as 3,000 uh, square meters of state-of-the-art labs. Amazing cafes and bars and an on-site gym and tennis courts available here as well, an investment of four million pounds in our brand new student hub and sports facilities available here, uh, as well as uh, in, uh, on our two uh, London campuses as well. So if you're into sports, uh, Greenwich may be a good choice for you. In terms of the entry requirements, we ask for a GPA of 3.0 plus standardized tests if you're looking for an undergraduate program and 2.8 if you're looking for a postgraduate program. Uh, many of our programs also accept direct entry onto year two and year three. So um, if you're uh, maybe studying a, a community college and uh, you're just completing your associate degree, uh, you may be able to enter um, um, one of our courses from year two and complete your uh, degree with us. We also provide accommodation, a total of 2,400 places available across our three Campuses, we guarantee accommodation for our first year students, particularly if they're international, and all of our accommodation um, options are within walking distance of the main buildings. So it's a, it's a real uh, campus um, community. Everything that you need is on campus, including uh, your accommodation about five minutes away. The amenities will include an on-site gym, cafes, laundry services, and social spaces. Um, and you're looking at an average of about £600 per month, and that will cover uh, rent, bills, Wi-Fi, and insurance. As many other universities in the UK, uh, we don't have uh, a meal plan, um, so you will be sharing your kitchen with your flatmates and making your own meals. In terms of undergraduate fees, uh, they are £15,100 uh, for students starting uh, in September this year. They may be similar, maybe slightly more, for students starting next year instead, and between 15,100 and 18,500 for postgraduate programs, depending on what program it is. Uh, you will be able to get funding through FAFSA as well, so you'll be able to use federal aid to fund your studies with us. And, and we also have international scholarship available for September 2022 and also September 2023, uh, up to 3,000 pounds off of your first year of study if you are applying for an undergraduate course and up to 1,500 for postgraduate programs. Thank you very much. So I hope I haven't uh, just quite run over my allocated time. But uh, if you'd like to find out more, uh, please do join us on the open day on the 25th of June. Uh, there's so much more to find out about the university. You will be able to join us virtually as well. So the open day is made available online um, for um, students that can't join us on campus. So please do uh, join us virtually if you can. And if you got any questions at all, uh, please do send us an email at internationalgre.ac.uk or you can chat to us uh, via uh, live chat on our website as well. And just before I go, I'm just going to leave you with uh, this slide here. So if you've uh, recognized the Greenwich campus, uh, then you should know that the, uh, Hollywood loves coming to um, our premises to film their productions. And many, many films have been shot on the premises, um, including Kingsman, uh, Now You See Me, Cinderella, uh, Les Miserables, Skyfall 007, The Iron Lady, and so, so many, many more. So thank you very much. And uh, Jennifer, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alberta, for presenting on University of Greenwich. Sorry about that, everybody. All right, we are on to our third school as the University of Exeter gets ready to present and get started. I just want to remind all of our attendees that are here. We've had a few more join us. Welcome. Please, if you have questions that you'd like to ask about um, any specific school that's presenting tonight or a general question um, to direct to all the schools, you've got the Q&A button on your screen. So we hope you'll open that up. And we've had some great questions already in there. Our representatives love to answer them. So uh, please use that Q&A. Um, box to ask questions. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over so we can now hear, learn all about the University of Exeter. Hi, everyone. My name is Adriana Caton. I'm just going to share my screen with you so I can start my presentation. 
Can everyone see that? Yeah. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you again for having me tonight. Um, my, I'm an international officer for the Americas for the University of Exeter. So you started out in Scotland, then you moved south into London area, and then now you're going down to the southwest of England where Exeter is located. Um, we have three campuses. This is a photo of our main campus, um, Streatham campus. It's located in the county of Devon. So as you see at the, the map at the bottom, um, there's Devon and Cornwall where our campuses are located. Um, and then we also have St. Luke's campus, which is also located in the city of Exeter. And we also have a Penryn campus, which is all the way south where you see the little C at the bottom um, in our Cornwall. Um, location, which is, as you can see, beautiful, really close to the coast and um, next to the city, uh, a town called Famith. Um, so this campus is a bit, I like to talk a little bit more about it. It's a smaller campus, but it's a very special place where we have our Environmental and Sustainability Institute, where so much amazing research that has to do with the environment and sustainability, um, you know, world leading research. Uh, we recently had the um, um, COP26 in Glasgow, where we had five academics from that in institute participate. So a lot of our, our um, um, inspiration and a lot of our courses are embedded with looking into the future and making a more sustainable future, green future. Um, so if you're interested in those areas, environmental studies, to definitely look at Exeter as one of your, your um, possible destinations. And we recently also won um, uh, the prize, the Queen's Prize for all the research that Exeter has done on the impact of plastics um, pollution for our oceans. So we have um, things like um, um, oceanography and all these, these marine biology and, um, uh, sorry, and animal behavior and the impact of um, the pollution in the environment with the animals and biology. So if you're interested in those areas, Exeter is definitely one of the universities you should consider coming to. We are also um, very diverse. We're a small city, we're a Roman city. So there is a, a, a city center, a historical center that you can uh, there's no cars allowed, so it's it's a really beautiful place to explore with a beautiful cathedral. You can see the top of the cathedral in this photo, and we are very diverse. The, the university has over um, 150 different um, nationalities, um, both in the, the staff and the students. We're considered the safest, uh, one of the safest and friendliest cities in England. So, um, and the overall student experience is always highly ranked. Um, this is the list of subjects. And I also, so, you know, I'm not gonna list all of them, but I also, I like to highlight that most of the um, US students currently are studying th these um, subjects with us. So you can see that there's a variety of Americans um, studying a variety of, of subjects at Exeter. And I'd like to highlight that we also have a flexible combined honors, which is, is kind of like um, a major and a minor, uh, which is rare for England. Um, it, there's a difference between uh, the, the Scottish system, which is very much like the American system with a four year bachelor's degree. And in England and Wales, we have, uh, in Northern Ireland, we have a uh, three years um, bachelor's degree. And, um, but so for that, for that um, reason, most students will go straight into their major and focus on that. But at Exeter, you can actually combine and we have a flexible honors degree. Um, we're also ranked top 150 for both the Times Higher Education and QS World Rankings in 2022. We are always uh, top 15 in the UK for across most majors. Uh, we're Russell Group University, which again, I'll mention our research, which, where 98% of our, our research is world leading. Um, we have great completion rates and satisfaction, and we were voted um, Sports University of the Year um, in the top, in, always in the top 10 um, 
out of all the British universities and, and for, the, for the college sports leagues. We recently actually, if you like rugby, if you like, if you know anything about rugby, we recently uh, were number one for the men's rugby um, for the sports league. And we also have clubs and societies that you can join to do activities on the weekend. You can, you know, you can try different sports as, a, as, a, as an amateur or a professional. And we ha you have access to our career zones through your lifetime. Um, currently, we have 90 undergraduate students um, uh, for, from the U.S., a total of 260, including uh, Ph.D. students and um, postgraduate students. And again, we, we're a large campus university, so combined all three of our campuses, we have around 27,000 students and 6,700, almost 7,000 of them are international. And I wanted to just show some photos of the region because I think one of the major th amazing things about living down in the Southwest is the quality of life. Um, this is just the city of Exeter. These are my personal photos. I like to share my personal photos, I don't mind. And this is, these are the beaches that are just down the road from us. And this is a national park, Dartmoor National Park with ponies and it looks like fairyland. It's beautiful. Wonderful. And yes, that's us. Um, yeah. So. Please contact Americas at Exeter.ac.uk if you have any questions uh, or you can put anything in it. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, Adriana, for sharing University of Exeter with us this evening. All right, we're on to our next school. We are going to hear from the University of Warwick. Oh, thanks so much, Jennifer, and greetings uh, from England, everybody. Thanks so much for, for joining today. Uh, so my name is Sarah, and I represent the University of Warwick. And Warwick is essentially a very highly selective campus university that is located right in the heart. Sarah? Sarah, are you there? Thanks so much. Sorry. Hey, it's, that, it, it's that time yes. of night. It's the it's the time of night where our internet re resets. I'm so sorry. I'm I'll just try. Don't start. worry. You can um definitely get reset and get started. After all the lives we've lived the last few years, I'm confident every panelist, every attendee, we all understand. So we lost Amazing. your sound a little bit first. So you might want to pop back uh, one Perfect. slide, at least I want to make certain. Um, Perfect. I will definitely do that. I'll just restart. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed, I think that's fingers, a better idea. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed that, it, that the internet holds out. So thanks Perfect. so much. So, so yeah, so, um, so my name is Sarah and I represent the University of Warwick, which is located right in the heart of England um, and is a highly uh, selective campus university. So now academically, Warwick challenges universities that are centuries older than us. So we're only just a little bit older than 50 years old, but we are consistently rated in the top 10 universities in the UK and the top 100 worldwide. Uh, we're a member of the Russell Group, which is a group of 24 self-selecting research intensive universities that are very much considered very prestigious. And that means that um, because we're research intensive, our students are being taught by professors who are very much writing um, the, all of this cutting edge uh, research in at the top of their fields. So as well as offering uh, highly focused three year bachelor's degrees that might uh, focus purely around a single subject area, we also do offer some broader programs such as liberal arts and global sustainable development. These programs draw on expertise from across the university uh, to help students to look at issues from lots of different perspectives so they transcend disciplines. But Warwick students don't typically just value our academic reputation. We're a really diverse and really inclusive campus community that provides support and uh, an abundance of opportunities outside of academic studies. So Warwick students typically thrive not only on exploring their academic program, uh, but also the campus, which feels like a miniature city um, with the wealth of extracurricular activities that we have on offer. So Warwick Students Union run around 250 student organizations, plus also an additional 65 sports clubs, uh, giving back 
activism and exploring new things are all really popular with Warwick students. And it's important to say that our students don't just join student organizations as members, many of them will have a real appetite for leadership as well. So a really good example of this is Warwick Economic Summit. This is one of the largest annual student-led conferences in Europe. And this is organized and brought together by Warwick students. And you can see from the range of speakers that they brought together for the 2021 um, conference that our students really are very much go-getters in terms of reaching out, building networks, finding opportunities and making things happen. So Warwick is a suburban campus. We're located on the edge of the city of Coventry, which is a medium sized English city. And um, from Coventry, it's super easy to travel around the UK and also to hop over to Europe as well. So with our access to Coventry and Birmingham, students can easily enjoy uh, city life. And for those keen to explore the area around the university, we're surrounded by historical towns, stunning castles, and uh, also importantly, the birthplace of William Shakespeare. So we have a housing guarantee for first year students and for the second and third year, uh, Warwick Accommodation runs a site called Warwick Student Pad, and that helps students to transition to private housing in the local area that has been bettered by the university. So we really do support students in their growth and transition towards independent living so that by the end of their degree, they're really confident to go off and explore new opportunities after graduation. Uh, tuition varies by program and it's typically lower for arts and social sciences than it is for STEM programs. Um, Warwick and the surrounding area have really reasonable costs of living compared to some of the bigger cities in the UK. And so the costs shown here are very much approximate um, in terms of the guide, but they'd hopefully give you an idea of the amounts that a student would pay for one year. And so just typically triple this for three years to figure out rough costs for the uh, duration in total. Uh, crucially, we believe that there should be no barrier to talent. And so that's why we're committed to offering a scholarship that makes it easier for gifted, ambitious international learners to pursue their academic interests with us. So for 2021 entry and also for 2022, for each of those years, we had uh, 250 awards available for uh, international students that are based on academic merit. And we're really excited to be running this again for 2023 entry, um, which uh, the arrangements and the details are subject to change, but we're, we're also, again, going to be offering that merit-based scholarship opportunity. Um, for admission, we publish our IB diploma requirements on each of our program pages on our website. And for students on a US high school curriculum or taking any other uh, different types of international qualifications, we use an, an equivalency system to our UK A-level requirements. So what this means is it typically translates to a minimum of three AP tests ranging between 544 to 555. Um, students don't need to have achieved those test scores already before applying. So for any students or parents of students in junior year, if they had, didn't take that, that, the, uh, those number of tests uh, in May this year, um, but will be taking more AP tests in senior year and will be on track to achieve them by the end of senior year, then they should definitely still um, consider us as one of their choices. Um, in addition to academic qualifications, the personal statement, the recommendation letter and predicted scores for senior year are also crucial components of the application. Um, if you'd like to know more about the application process and the personal statement, which would be really different to the type of statement and essays that you'd write for a US college, um, I definitely encourage you to check out my self-serve Padlet of resources and I will pop a link through to this in the uh, in the chat and I'll hand back over to, to Jennifer to pass you over to the next representative. Thanks so much. Wonderful, Sarah. Thank you so much. That worked out just fine. So I'm glad we're able to, to jump in and get that solved. So thank you so much for presenting on Warwick. All right, our next school today is gonna to be the University of Edinburgh. Great, thanks so much. Hi, everyone. Just gonna get my screen shared. Okay, can everyone see it hopefully? Okay, yes, great. Looks um, great. Thanks. So hi, my name is Michaela Spencer. I'm an international recruitment manager for the University of Edinburgh. I'm based in our North America office, which is here in the US 
in New York City. Um, I also typically have a coworker who's in California. She's currently on maternity leave, but when she's back, we typically have someone who's also based in California and the rest of our team is based at the university in Scotland. So about the city of Edinburgh, it is Scotland's capital city. Uh, we're one of four universities based in the city. Um, so there's about Students make up about 15% of the population of the city, um, and the city itself has a population of 525,000. So it's not too large. Um, it's pretty easy to get around, very compact and walkable. Uh, there's a bike hire scheme you can use to get around, great public transport with the bus and the tram. Um, it's also a festival city. Typically pre-COVID times, we had about one per uh, month, um, with the biggest typically being the Fringe Festival every August. Um, so once you're enrolled as a student, hopefully if you come, you'll have, get a chance to attend the Fringe Festival. The university itself is one of Scotland's ancient universities and was founded back in 1583, so it's been a little while. Um, we're ranked 16th in the world, um, which is according to QS University rankings for 2022. And we have a great reputation for teaching and research. And as you can see, we have quite a few um, Nobel Prize winners. We are Scotland's university. We have a student body of over 45,000 students, which I know seems huge, um, but that's great because uh, we have students from over 160 countries. So you'll be able to meet students from all, not just the UK, but from all around the world. Um, and with our university events and student societies, you really get a good chance um, to celebrate the welcoming and diverse student community that we have. In terms of the academic structure, we have three colleges, the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, which is where our business school is located. As you'll notice, it's not separate. Um, the College of Science and Engineering and a combined College of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine. So all in all, we have about 390 undergraduate degrees um, for you to choose from. In terms of the academic calendar, we have two 11-week semesters with exams at the end of each semester, um, with the fall semester typically starting in September um, and the spring typically starting in January. So for undergraduate study, as my colleague mentioned earlier, uh, Scotland offers the four-year degree system that you may be accustomed to with the US. Um, as you noted, it does offer a little bit more flexibility and choice of subjects. Um, so you'll have that flexibility in your first two years of study at the university. Um, by your third year, you'll really start to specialize in your degree program. Um, as well, if you're interested in studying abroad, you'll be able to apply for that. Typically, students tend to go abroad for the entire academic year. Um, a great thing about the university is you're very much so encouraged to do a lot of independent inquiry, um, a lot of critical thinking. Um, so you'll have a lot of chances to do a lot of self-directed work outside of a classroom. So outside the classroom, um, when you arrive to study at the university, we have a welcome week um, to welcome new students as well as returning students. So you can get to learn the university, the city, um, and see different activities you'd be interested in participating in. Uh, we have over 290 student groups and societies, um, so there should be something for you, but if for some reason your interest or hobby, whether it's a hobby or academic in nature, isn't available, uh, you can find a few other students who are interested in the same thing and start your own society. Um, if you're interested in continuing on with sports, we do offer 64 different sports clubs, um, so you can join one of those as well. University housing um, is guaranteed in your first year of study, um, as long as you submit your application on time, and it's only really due like a month before you would start the university, so you have plenty of time to apply. Um, we do have uh, options where you can have a meal plan or you can cook your own meals, um, so when reviewing the options, you can get an idea of what we have. Um, in terms of support services, we have counseling services, disability services, um, advice place, and a career service. So hopefully you'll feel that there are enough support services to help you uh, holistically while you're there at the university. In terms of applying, uh, we accept applications from well qualified applicants. Um, 
So you will submit your application through UCAS, not on the Common App, unfortunately. Um, in terms of qualifications, we do require you submit three standardized test scores, um, any combination of the ACT, SAT, and AP exams. Um, you also need to submit a personal statement as well as an academic reference. Um, if you go to our website, you will be able to find the specific entry requirements for US applications as they can vary depending on the subject area. So I encourage you to explore university and chat with our students um, using the link on the screen. You can use Unibuddy to connect with students. Um, they're from around the world, um, studying a variety of different subjects. I can't promise there'll be students in the subject you're interested in, but hopefully there'll be someone um, that has enough in common with you that you want to chat with them, ask them about their experience, whether that be the application experience or what it's been like since they've enrolled. If you have any questions that you'd like to get in touch with my team and I, please do email us at futurestudents.ed.ac.uk. And lastly, uh, feel free to go to the virtual visits link um, so you can get a look around campus online. And with that, I'll pass it back to Jennifer. Thanks. Thank you so much, Caleb, for presenting on the University of Edinburgh. All right, we are on to our sixth school of the six by six, University of Roehampton, London. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And thanks guys for hanging in there with us. Um, hopefully I won't take up too much of your time. Um, but my name is Amanda Lundberg and I'm an international officer for the University of Roehampton in London, England. Um, I am from the US as you can hear, but I lived in London for 12 years and I'm excited to share with you why you should attend Roehampton. All right, let's move on. So a few facts and figures, first of all, about our great city. I know my colleague uh, in uh, Greenwich also shared some of this. Um, but London is the capital of England with a population of around 9 million people. Um, there's over 300 languages spoken in London. Uh, so it's a very multi, um, multicultural and diverse city. Uh, England's actually smaller than you might think. About, it's about a fifth of the size of Texas, uh, which is why it's surprising that we have so many international airports. Um, you'll, of course, have amazing and cheap access to Europe, being able to travel all over. Um, and then a few things you can expect living in the UK, talking about the weather and football, of course, um, drinking lots of tea, so make sure you try that before you go, uh, experiencing utter politeness, I can attest to that, uh, having much better chocolate options, and then of course the great humor as well. Um, England is a, of course a global influence and it would be the eighth largest economy in the world. We'll jump into Roehampton now. So we are we consider ourselves camp, uh, London's campus university, um, which is unique. We do have a single campus. Um, we're not kind of dotted all over the city. Um, we're situated on a beautiful 54 acre campus in Southwest London. We've been providing education for 180 years, actually more than now this year. Um, and we were the first college of higher education in the UK to admit women, which we're really proud of. Um, we've also been re-ranked as a top 10 university in London. And then you can get a little peek of some of our architecture on campus there. So we have a very diverse student population at Roehampton with about 9,000 students enrolled, of whom 28% are from outside the UK um, and represent around 146 different nationalities. Um, so very much keeping in line with London's multiculturalness. 93% um, of our students are in employment or further education upon graduation. Um, and we're ranked uh, second amongst London universities for student satisfaction, which we're very proud of. Um, we're very much a research-led institution. We've been ranked as the most research-intensive modern university in the UK. So this kind of shows you our proximity um, to central London. We're just down the River Thames from London's popular tourist attractions. We're very near Wimbledon, where the annual tennis happens, and across from one, in, one of London's eight royal parks. Um, public transportation in London, of course, is fantastic. You're going to have a huge variety of buses and trains and trams, uh, tubes to get you around. Um, and we also have a free, uh, free university bus, which will take you in and out of London as well as in our media area as well. So as you can see, our campus is lush and green, but being close to central London, um, you get the best of both worlds with both city and nature. Uh, the university is comprised of four historic colleges, similar to other collegiate systems, but we like to compare ourselves to Harry Potter because it does depend on what you study, which college you're in. Um, each college offers some great amenities on each, and they each provide a fantastic community within the community at Burlington. Uh, our degrees are shorter than US degrees, as my colleagues have kind of explained. So you could have two in the time it takes you to get one. Um, the great thing about you know, the universities in England is that you have no GE requirements. So you're gonna be you know, bypassing all of that and starting your major from day one, which is excellent. So it does make it 
very academically challenging, but um, a specialized degree as well. So these are some of the subject areas you can look to um, study with us, but we couldn't put them all on one slide. <laughs> Um, our entry requirements are going to vary from program to program, of course, but typically we look for between 2.8 and 3.0. We are completely test optional, have been so since before um, the pandemic. Uh, you can still submit your scores if you've taken them, but um, they're, they're not required. Uh, some subjects do require particular grades if you're doing English, uh, creative writing, or life, uh, any of our life sciences. Um, we also take transfer students into year two or year three. So if you're looking to do community college, we can also work with you there as well. Applying simple, my colleagues have covered that. Um, but just to say, we have rolling admissions at Roehampton, so there's no hard deadlines to apply. Um, and we have three different intakes depending on your program. So you can either start September, January, or April. Um, and then you can apply through our free online application in addition to UCAS as well. In terms of overall costs, we're very affordable, especially considering you're saving a year of tuition with a three year degree. Uh, we have numerous scholarships, as you can see here. Most of our, our U.S. students do qualify for one or more of these. Um, you can see the typical costs. It's around $20,000 per year um, for undergraduate programs. Um, and then the total cost of living expenses as well is around $36,000. So very affordable compared to other you know, out-of-state or of, um, other, other options. We do accept FAFSA for funding. Um, and um, you can you can see some of the some of the other scholarships we have available for funding as well. A little bit about our supports. We do want to support you, you know, while you're with us. Of course, there's lots of learning supports available. We have um, on-site services, which as uh, chaplaincies, we can support you know any religion that you might want to practice. Medical center, we can get medical care on campus. Student well-being officers, uh, if you have any confidential matters. We do have a career services office, um, which will support you while you're with us as well as you graduate. Um, and then, of course, our financial support will help with any funding, payment, and things like that as well. So, thank you for there. Thanks, Jennifer. I will skip right through these because I've run out of time, but we do have some fantastic accommodation options with meal plans if you don't want to cook. Lots to get involved with on campus. I have more slides than I realized. Um, and then it's a little bit about our, our sports. I would be happy to send this to anybody that might want to review it later. But I'll leave you with the final slide with my QR codes and contact information. But thank you for hanging in there with us today. Uh, please do get in touch if you have any questions at all. But thanks for your time. Great. Thank you so much, Amanda. I know the six minutes just flies by. We all know that for sure. And there's always so much more to share. All right. So we have a few more minutes together. Uh, we finished the formal part, the six by six. We want to make sure that all of our panelists, representatives have gotten their content information if they want to share that in the chat, but attendees can grab that. Um, any last Q&A questions? So we're going to do one live Q&A question together. So as you can see, um, I'm, you're having representatives come back on camera, so I'm not all alone out here. So welcome back, everyone. We'll go in the exact same order for this question uh, that you presented in. When the person ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone and answer. I won't call person to person you know, during this. We'll just flow. Um, all right. So you are the pros um, and, you know, especially with the experience for um, students looking to travel to the UK for school, um, you have so much information you can share. So what is some advice or a top tip that you would love those watching um, to know about the college search process and, you know, if it's particular to that experience um, uh, for international, for students going abroad from the US um, to study, feel free to answer it that way too. So we'll start great. with Sterling. Great. Um, okay, so if you decide to um, come to the UK, which we hope that you will, and you go through the UCAS process, you will only have five choices on your UCAS form, so you need to use them wisely. So I would say, number one, do your research. Make sure it's the right choices for you, because obviously courses with similar names will vary drastically. It might be that you want to do work experience. It might be that you want to study abroad. So make sure you do your research. And the other thing is, make sure you've got a variety of entry requirements. Like some, you might have an aspirational choice that you really want to get into, um, but have some um, have some other backup plans as well. Because if all have the same entry requirements and you don't necessarily meet those grades, um, then you have no full black uh, plan. So I would say have a mixture of different entry requirements. And I think it's Alberto next. Uh, yes, uh, that's right. So, uh, sorry, Jennifer, am I answering the same question? 
darn mute button. Um, yes, you're answering the same question. Your top tip or piece of advice. Okay, well, I would say um, similar to, um, to what Ali said, I would say do your research around your location um, and also decide where you're going to um, be based essentially because there's uh, the, you know, the, the England and the whole of the UK is so, so diverse in terms of landscape. Uh, there will be universities that are rural, uh, more that are sort of city-based like, uh, like most universities in London, like Greenwich, for example. And, uh, and so really think about what you're trying to get out of your university experience and, uh, and what the campus is going to look like um, for you, essentially. So it goes back to, you know, the, the, the old do your research um, argument, but it, it's so much more, it's, it's so important to, to also make sure that you like where you're going to live and study. I guess I'm next. Um, yes, I was going to, um, Alberto, you stole my answer, but that's okay. I'll kind of elaborate. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically I think it's, a lot of people focus on the academic side. Obviously that's really important, but you have to think about what your day-to-day -day like is gonna be. Um, you know, or, or, or you need to know yourself for that. And you need to, to know if you want to be in a buzzy city with, you know, lots of things going on all the time, or if you want somewhere that you have more access, easier access to nature. I mean, it, 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 I lived in the US for many years and um, it, it's living in England, it's a completely different concept of, of, of distance. So like, you know, I live in Exeter, but in two hours I can catch a train being London, like for the weekend. And so it's not, it's, it's not like, you know, Exeter is like someone said, I don't remember who said, is one fifth of, of Texas or something. It's, uh, um, sorry, England is one fifth of, of Texas. It's a very small country. So um, if you have the opportunity to come visit, universities I would recommend you do that like take the summer and come visit the, your top choices and and do like you know a trip with your family or your friend or whoever you think would be important to bring with you and so yeah just really really decide really think about what you want your day-to-day -to, -day to be like um you know if you want access to beaches if you want access to you know uh, you know, an airport really close by, an international airport really close by. So those things will really make a difference on your time as a student here in the UK. And talk to students, talk to current students, go on the websites of the universities and do like the chat with the students that, um, the student ambassadors that are available. A lot of the universities will have, will have that option for you. So talk to current students. Amazing, right? I'll, I'll chip in now. So, um, and I would say, um, don't be nervous. This goes for students and for parents and for counsellors, whoever. Don't be nervous to talk to representatives like like all of us that are on the call today, because we work slightly differently um, to a lot of US college um, representatives that you might talk to. In that, most UK schools don't factor demonstrated interest into admission and don't really track engagement for admission either. So talking to us, we're more like customer service people um, than people who are making decisions on applications. So we're really a resource to be able to help people get the information that they need, particularly for international students um, and families to get the information they need to make an informed decision. So, it, you know, no question is a silly question to ask us because it won't go against you if you ask a question. Um, but, but also do also consider that um, talking to us also doesn't really give you any brownie points if you apply either. So there's no pressure to talk to us um, if you don't need to. But we are we're essentially more of a resource than somebody who is impacting your application. Uh, great. Um, so I'll add a uh, Adriana took one of mine that I was going to go with now, um, so <laughs> I'll change and go. Um, if you are applying through UCAS, I would recommend looking at the differences in the personal statement as it does kind of vary from the US style personal statement. It's not as long um, and it's not kind of as open ended. It's really 
um, more to the point of why do you want to study? Why do you want to study it in the UK um, and how it's going to affect your career choices potentially? So do look at the guides either on the UCAS sites or on the university site that you plan to attend, um, apply to, because um, there are great tips and videos to kind of help you through that process. And of course, if you have any confusion, as Sarah said, just reach out to us, more than happy to help. Yeah, I don't know if I can add anything else. You guys all just like covered it all, but I was definitely my, what I was going to say was just about contacting us. We are your made the number one resource. Many of us either live in country or used to live in country, you know, know the campus well. Um, we can connect you with either current US students or just current students in your program. So yeah, just don't be shy to reach out. That's my number one bit. These are all such great tips. Um, thank you so much to all of our panelists for sharing the tips the facts, the figures, um, and just the passion you have for your students' experiences on each of your amazing campus communities. Um, for everyone watching, thank you for being here. When you close your window, there'll be a link to a very quick five-question survey. We appreciate the feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions that are coming up. And don't forget, you'll find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at the same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash college essay guy. Thanks again, everyone, for taking time out of your day and all the best uh, ahead for you all. The College Search is an adventure. It's fun. It's stressful. And it's amazing. Good night, everyone.